What's the strongest you can make one villager in one year? Three weeks ago, I threw down the gauntlet and put out a video asking people to complete a challenge alongside me. Start a new village with the goal of preparing one champion to face off against an endless stream of raiders in one-on-one -on -one fights. Whoever gets the most kills before being killed or knocked out wins. In that video, I bet my champion would kill 17 raiders on their own. Will they? Is that going to be enough to win the tournament? Thomas sent me John, who's rocking fine plate gear, a short sword, and a melee skill of 28. SG8 sent me Alphonse, who's got more of a tribal setup going on. Hodor sent me Boren, which I might be mispronouncing. It's French for bully. They boast an impressive 30 in melee, plate gear, and a fine longsword. This competition's going to be fierce. There were some rules. Everyone plays on a set seed with the default a new life start on peaceful mode but hard difficulty. The most important skills have to start at 10, every villager can only get one perk, and each villager will only have a single star of passion. After that, you can put any number of points into other skills until you start out at 300 points. There is no interacting with traders and no accepting other new villagers. I'm going to speed through my strategy and the run in about 9 minutes. My run started with Sybil, who has an animal skill of 30 and a few points in construction, plus a passion in smithing. Abel also has his passion in smithing and points in botany and culinary. They're both brawny, which increases their global work speed and move speed. It's one of, if not the overall strongest perk in the game for workers. But it's not what our champion's gonna have. Meet Super Abel. Wait, no, I misspelled it. Meet Super Abel I. She's got her passion in intellectual and points in mining, but her perk is robust. This increases motor function, which still makes her work faster at most jobs, but more importantly, it makes her attack faster in combat. I did make the mistake of leaving Abel's carpentry at 0 instead of 10, but Super Abel I doesn't use her impressive skill of 23 in mining until I fix this issue in-game. This is the map that everyone played on. There's some iron in every direction, but we're going to go left towards this crevice. Building into that means that I only have to build half as many walls for the first few buildings. A wood stockpile goes in in the middle of town to make building more efficient by reducing travel distance for Sybil. Next, a goat pen. There's a reason I invested more points in Sybil's animal husbandry than in any other skill. These are going to be trained into pets that help haul. After the research table is in, I'll unlock architecture and agriculture with the starting chronicles, then queue up lots more for the champion to produce. Once the pen is finished being built, Sybil can rope the goats over so that she can train them a little bit more quickly. With her skill, she's got a 100% chance of succeeding, and the goats should both be pets before summer. With all that done, Sybil can throw on the armor we started with, and go get beat up on by Super Abel Eye to help her work on her melee skill. She and Abel didn't realize they'd be signing up for this, but this is a huge part of their lives now. Punching someone is the best way to train melee, and it takes less than 2 hours for my champion's melee skill to hit the daily cap of 1200 experience, after which they only gain 10% experience in the skill until midnight. The goal while training is to hit that value every day, but you really don't want to go over it until you have nothing else to do. After being a punching bag, Sybil can make the most miserable bedroom imaginable, then a meager kitchen and a small storage space. All while Super A Bly is doing research, and Abel plants cabbage or cuts down trees. Unlike my normal bases, which are very spacious, this place is tightly packed to minimize how far villagers have to run. Stairs up are going to lead to where they'll do most of their mining and crafting. All this on day one, although things are going to speed up a lot. With the basic buildings in, Sybil can start mining iron. Low skill reduces how much ore she gets back. By doing these further ones first, she'll then generate more ore closer to the base when she moves over, reducing the hauling needs. She can also work on mining out a small cellar to store the cabbage crops that Abel harvests. Super Abel has done enough research to unlock smelters, so I put a line of them in. These aren't going to finish today, but at least smithing training can start tomorrow. The stockpiles there are going to keep what they'll need nearby. After thinking about it, I've ultimately decided to only use Abel for smithing. Botany and cooking just aren't going to take as much time as Sybil's building. Giving them both passions for this was a bad idea. I thought I might be able to keep both smithing to double my chances at high quality gear, but I can't generate enough iron to train both of them until it's way too late. Another smelter goes in, and then a building to eventually house our metalworking can go in right by these. This isn't actually going to be used for a long time though. The idea was to make these bars early, then spit out armor near the end once Abel's skill is higher. Three sets of ingots cap him on experience every day. In the meantime, Super Abel has done enough research to unlock the next tier of research bench, which goes in the library. That's going to unlock steel soon, which will require coal, so I'll start mining some at this southern vein. I thought I could ignore my settlers' happiness so that they'd spend more time working, but they don't like that plan, somehow. I'll go ahead and put in a backgammon table. I'll also give them better beds and a table to eat at. I'd hope that was enough because the bigger buff from a shrine would require they spend some time worshipping there, but they do eventually need one. I should have made all three of my villagers an oak brethren so that I only needed to make one shrine, but oh well. I unlock blacksmithing and put in a forge for use in the far-ish off future. Its construction leads in really nicely to the next clip. The first goat is done being tamed into a pet, and the second follows suit soon after. They've also started breeding, and there's another young goat being trained up right now to help too. These beauties are eventually going to be an army of haulers. I won't be 
showing any of it, but I don't expect the villagers will ever really need to haul again. The first season's done. One quarter of the time's through, but we've gotten a lot of progress under our belt. Almost 250 research books, 840 iron, and 480 steel ingots. Able's smithing is almost 17, and Super Ableized melee skill is a lower 16 because I missed one day of training. Able can go ahead and get an armorer's table to work at. I want to get a simple helmet so that Super Ableized stops doing so much damage when she crits during training, but without hide, I'll have to wait for armorer 2 for a male helmet. Able gets a fifth furnace to make sure he has almost no downtime doing anything else. Those top two make iron ingots, while the bottom three all turn those into steel. It's only one third of the way through the year, but I already have enough cabbage for the rest of the challenge, so I'll get rid of that to avoid giving Able anything to do but smithing. I also have so many steel bars that I actually need to make a second story just to store them all. Time starts to pass more and more quickly. Super Ablei trains Melee to cap every day, then writes books. Abel makes metal bars. Sybil mines iron and coal to supply him. Most of the early game optimizations are done, but there are late game ones that are going to make that extra little bit of difference that might decide the tournament. With every red book I'll ever need fully finished, I can move the table out of the library to make room for the advanced research table I'll soon put it in its place. We have so many bars already, more than 2,000, that Abel can start making swords. He isn't fully trained yet, but there's still a small chance that he's going to make a really good sword now. Oh, and I finally caught that error I made with their stats and used dev tools to fix it. Super A Bly is almost done with research and ready to mine, although that's going to require the last tier research bench. It's needed to make the 15 theses required to unlock Armorer 3, but it can go in... or not. It needs a construction skill of 20 to make. Sybil, our best builder, isn't even close. She's almost a full season away. This is a huge mistake, but it's not run ending. To train, I'm going to make lots of limestone windows. Construction gets about 9 experience per second regardless of what they're making, but windows take the longest to make per resource used. In way, way better news, Abel made a superior steel longsword. This is probably what I'm going to take to the fight, but at his current skill level, he only has like a 7% chance of making something this good, and a 1% chance of making something flawless. That's huge, but it's not enough. We need that advanced research table and armor of 3. Sybil's going to spend all fall repeatedly making and then deconstructing windows. Abel's making two sets of ingots and then a longsword or two every day. This gives him 2100 experience per day before the cap reduces further gains, so he'll skill up really fast. He still has a small chance of making a flawless sword too. Since Super A Bly isn't needed in the library, she can follow the other villagers around and just punch them constantly to surpass her experience cap by 600 or so every day. It honestly feels like Sybil should be in a worse mood. It takes the rest of the season for Sybil to hit 20 construction, gaining roughly 1600 experience or more than 11 hours of building windows just to deconstruct them every single day. But now she gets to build something else, and then probably never build again. As soon as this table is in, I'll queue up textbooks that Super Able Eye can immediately make. God dang. Okay, Super A Bly is at least close. She just needs a couple days of making blue books for experience. I totally forgot about this. My bad. In total, I've put them almost a full season behind with these mistakes, although that's not as disastrous as it might seem. In reality, that's just 15 or so chances to hit a lucky roll. I should still have a full set of superior gear, plus maybe a flawless piece by the end of the challenge. Winter arrives. Super A Bly is at a melee skill of 26. Abel is at a smithing skill of 29. He's made over a dozen longswords, but nothing's better than the superior one he made fairly early on. My champion finally hits 25 in an intellectual, and the requisite textbooks take over a day to make, but I eventually unlock armor 3 and queue up plate gear. The first great helm comes out as fine. Not bad, but I'll be fishing for something superior or flawless for the tournament. Sybil makes one final bedroom here for one other minor optimization. Yeah, life's gonna get worse for her. I want her to suffer from hypothermia, so I'm stripping her down and sending her out into the cold. That'll let her coalesce, which means that she's recovering hit points three times as fast. Since Super Ablai's experience is currently gated by how quickly her target dummies get their health back, crippling my villagers with a life-threatening ailment will eventually make our champion stronger very slightly faster. Did this challenge make me a monster? Eh. Before I get the chance to put that to use, Abel makes a superior plate body with just five and a half days left. That's almost certainly what I'm going to be taking to the fight. All that's left is a great helm. Coalescing does work, although tripling their hit points recovery isn't enough to let Super A Bly beat on Sybil indefinitely. With just three days left, Abel knocks it out of the park with a flawless great helm. Super A Bly now has that, a superior plate body, and a superior longsword. I do think a helmet is the worst piece to have be flawless, with the weapon being the best, but I'm still more than happy to have this. Sybil really likes coming to the goat room. I don't know why everyone loves it here, but it's her favorite place to be a punching bag. 
Although having said that, with two days left, there's no way that Super Able Eye is getting another melee level. She caps out at about 2,000 experience per day. Sybil's hell is finally coming to an end. Abel doesn't make any more flawless gear in the last couple of days, no surprise. Overall, I'm super happy with this. Super Able Eye is not maxed out. I definitely made some major mistakes, like having Sybil's passion be smithing, the construction and intellectual mix-up that cost the season, and a missed day of training. But Abel was making swords throughout periods anyways, and it's not that big of a deal. I could have swapped him to making gear earlier and had Super Able Eye do extra training by hitting people until their hit points were the limiting factor a little bit earlier, but all of that would only amount to one more level in melee and a small chance at another piece of flawless gear. Super Able Eye can eat some cooked meat in the morning of the tournament, go pray for victory, and then head off to war. With everyone geared up and rocking what they've brought, the tournament can start. I'm going to use dev tools to spawn basic marauders in for each contestant to fight one at a time. Their gear and response is randomized, as are hits, misses, and crits in combat, so no one's guaranteed to come out on top. And when I unpause, they should start fighting. Wait, hold on. This is collusion. Okay, I didn't think they'd just run through defenses like that. Let's, uh... Wow, they really want a piece of Super A Bly. Let's change this setup. There, that'll hopefully work better. Now when I unpause it, they'll start fighting. Wow, Boren one-shots their opponent. Super Ableye takes two to do it. John dishes out damage a little bit more slowly, but that shield helps him take less in return. Alphonse is struggling a lot though. Eventually, all the raiders go down and everyone gets another foe spawned in immediately. Boren continues her streak of not taking any damage, but the same can't be said for Alphonse. He goes down, our first victim. The others start racking up kills quickly. Three, four, five, and six all go down before the arena gets cleaned out. Seven starts. John's still killing enemies a lot more slowly, but thanks to that shield, he's only a bit more banged up than Super A Bly. Boren's definitely got the best of it so far. There's eight, nine, and ten, though John's still having issues with ten. Keep in mind that as he takes more blows, he also picks up injuries, which make him progressively worse. One hit could take him out, but he eventually clutches it with a blow that rends his foe's helmet in twain. He's still low for eleven. How long can this keep up? Will it matter? John lets a few clutch brutal blows to survive. Don't call this a comeback. That's another six down. Time for more cleanup. Ultimately, John's second wind is not strong enough, and he goes down. That was 12 kills under his belt. Now it's down to Super A Bly and Boren. The latter starting to take a few more hits in their fights. Super A Bly attacks a bit faster and two shots more of the enemies with their stronger weapon, but both are doing great. 14, 15, 16, and 17 all go down in quick succession. I guess my champion would take out 17 foes before this challenge, but both of our remaining contestants handle the 17th with ease and stand strong. Oh, and if you thought I was going to get less than that, you're legally obligated to like this video. If you thought I'd get more, you have to subscribe. Then 19. Uh, huh? Longswords can definitely hurt them. Super A Bly dishes out her 19th kill while Boren drops and picks their sword up again, which fixes the issue. Boren takes a huge hit, putting them close to death. Their 21th fight, Super A Bly takes a big hit too. They're both close to knockout range. Either side could go down in one more blow. Here's 22. Boren takes a massive hit. One more blow will kill them. Oh, and they miss. Is this going to be the end? No, they get the attack off just in time to finish the enemy. 23 is here. That's an unfortunate miss. They're both on death's door. Boren finally falls. All Super A Bly has to do is finish off one more and there it is. We have our champion. 23 kills under her belt. She took two-thirds of her health and damage to do this, which means that one more blow could have knocked her out and made Boren the champion instead, but Super Able is going to ascend to the king and queen to receive congratulations and their reward. I seriously can't thank those that submitted their runs enough. I think they made the video a lot better, and if you did too, show some appreciation for them in the comments. Hopefully you've all enjoyed this video. It was definitely a bit of an experiment, but I enjoyed the challenge and making this. If you want to understand some of the strategies I use to level up, I have a great video that goes over the fastest way to train every skill in the game. And if you want to see more challenge videos like this, or if you want a hint as to which one's next, let me know in the comments.